Our government is increasing our ongoing commitment to funding for sexual and reproductive health rights. We will be raising our funding to $1.4 billion annually. Dear Mr. Trudeau, my name is Zuri and I live in Ethiopia. I heard about your announcement today. $1.4 billion. Why is there so much cheering about bringing these foreign ideas to my community? $700 million of the annual investment dedicated to sexual and reproductive health rights. Can't you see that many of my friends can't even go to school? We can help women access birth control. That some of us don't have enough food to eat. It's essential that these women have access to modern contraception. That my father can't find work. As well as sexual education and prevention services. Why then, I ask, are they cheering? Canada is doubling its current investment to help close existing gaps in reproductive rights. In 2017, Justin Trudeau marked International Women's Day by committing $650 million of Canada's annual foreign aid towards sexual and reproductive health and rights, a euphemism for abortion, sterilization, and sexuality education. And that, Mr. Accessible. Speaker, includes the right to safe and accessible abortions. That same year, Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister proudly proclaimed that sexual and reproductive rights, particularly abortion, are at the core of Canada's foreign policy. Let that sink in. Abortion, the deliberate termination of a human being before birth. At the core of our foreign policy, to the tune of billions of dollars. This is about what we need to achieve in the world to promote our values. And in February 2020, Minister of International Development Karina Gould said this, a woman's right to choose and her ability to access family planning and safe abortions is fundamental to achieving a more equitable, a more peaceful, and a more prosperous world. Abortion for a more peaceful and prosperous world? And it doesn't end there. Even during a worldwide pandemic, millions of COVID-19 relief dollars were earmarked for abortion in developing nations. The last thing Canadians expect uh, is uh, for me to come down and uh, lecture another country on how they choose to govern themselves. Why is it then that the Canadian government continues to fund organizations and special interest groups with hundreds of millions of dollars per year? pressuring African countries to legalize abortion. No, abortion is not a human right. Abortion is not in any way uh, universally accepted. Obianuju Ekiocha is an internationally acclaimed strategist, speaker, author, and filmmaker. She was born and raised in southeastern Nigeria. I never dreamt that I would be in a position where I'm going into different African countries trying to find out exactly how the different Western nations, foundations and Western organizations are affecting African women's lives. Her award-winning documentary, Strings Attached, exposes the ideological colonization that Canada is guilty of under the leadership of Justin Trudeau. I don't think that any Western country uh, has a right to, to pay for, for abortions in an African country, especially where the majority of people don't want abortion. She understands that these may be the values of the Canadian Prime Minister. The commitment that this government has made to stand up and defend reproductive rights at every single opportunity is one that sticks in their craw, Mr. Speaker. But these are not the same values held by an overwhelming majority of African nations. In fact, many Africans turn up their noses when you tell them that, you know, some Western country has, has made this large budget for sexual and productive health and rights. People wonder, well, can they see that we don't even have food to eat? Trudeau's obsession with abortion on demand is well documented in Canada. There are certain groups 
that are specifically dedicated to fighting abortion rights for women and that is wrong. We will defend women's rights regardless of what folks in certain religious groups try to push us against. But with most Canadians divided on this issue, why are our tax dollars funding and promoting it throughout the African continent? So who is the government of Canada trying to excite or to please? David Mulroney spent 32 years in the Canadian Foreign Service. He was Canada's ambassador to the People's Republic of China from 2009 to 2012 and served as Associate Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and personal representative to the G8 Summit. His book about Canada-China relations won the J.W. Defoe Prize for 2016. It sounds a little as if they're trying to please their like-minded allies in the UN and some of the major foundations that also see abortion as the solution to all of Africa's problems. As one of Canada's leading experts on foreign policy, he's convinced that our country is in some ways acting like the coercive China, which he knows all too well. China is right now in the midst of a major and appalling crackdown on religious freedom. There's an enormous effort to, uh, to really remove religion from their society and from other parts of Chinese society. The level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China, their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. No one is suggesting that Canada is using the same kind of violent and illegal means that China uh, sometimes uses in its coercive diplomacy. But the use of money and the power and leverage of money is in many ways the same. No country should be able to come into another country and make their own dictates, make their own demands, or push the power of their money or their wealth. David Mulroney and Obianuju Ekiocha unpack the Canadian government's obsession with spreading the ideology of abortion in Obsessed, Canada's Coercive Diplomacy.